These are instructions on how to make a lab in Excel. And the data I'm going to use is the data from the um, peg drop lab where we were looking at potential energy and kinetic energy that you also had in your data analysis test. So the first thing I want to do is enter my data into Excel. Excel is really a data analysis program. It's not a program where you're going to make tables that you would then have in your lab. So I will have a different video showing you how to make tables. And to show you the difference, this was a lab that I did at one point. And all of these numbers I entered in and then a lot of the calculations like in F or G or H, I had Excel calculate for me so that I didn't need to calculate it all myself. But then in the actual lab that I turned in, I had it on Microsoft Word. So I then made a table that gave me what I wanted without using these large numbers with trailing decimals from Excel. So keep that in mind. Your tables you're going to want to make in um, Word, but you can use Excel to kind of crunch the numbers. So I'm going to look at height in meters versus total energy in joules. And if I want to make this bigger, I can simply double click between the B and C and it makes it bigger. The other thing is when I'm making a graph, Excel doesn't understand letters. So because I've put my meters up here, I'm not going to put in any units as I enter my data. So I have, um, I'm, I'm going to start with zero actually. So because that's the lowest height, then I'm going to say 0 0.0262. And you can go ahead and enter the rest of your data. Okay, so now I have all of my data entered for height versus total energy. And you'll notice I actually changed the height of the second point right here. I had entered that incorrectly. And so it's really important. I think that shows that you look over your data and make sure you have the data you want. So now I have just the stuff I want to graph. I don't need anything else because, again, I'm not making a, a table here. I'm making a graph. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the data that I want to graph. And you'll notice there's kind of a thick black line around it. And, and this first box here is still white. It's not grayed out, but that's okay. The line goes around the whole thing. So I'm going to say insert. And then I want not a line graph, but a scatter plot. When we, when we say line graph in science, what we really mean is a scatter plot. A line graph is something slightly different. And so I'm going to go to my scatter plot, and I'm going to choose this one. I'm not going to connect the dots because I'm going to use a trend line later anyway. So that will give me a physical line in my graph if that's something that's bothering you. So I click on that, and this gives me a good rough draft of my data. There are a number of things that we need to change here. So the first thing is I notice this title isn't very good. So I'm going to double click on that. And I'm going to put in some sort of descriptive title. So I know that this is the total energy of a peg falling while at different heights. And, and so that really tells me what this is. It doesn't just say total energy versus height. Height of what? What is the thing doing? If you're simply looking at height, then there should be more energy the higher it is. If it's moving, then that involves kinetic energy as well, and that's going to be different. So now I need to put in my axis labels here and here. And this is where a lot of people have simply been putting this in Word and then including text boxes. So I'm going to go to Layout right here up at the top. And right here it says Axis Titles. So I can do my horizontal axis. And now I can enter in what I want that to be. So down here, this is height of peg in its drop. And that was in meters. And then I can go back to Axis Titles and I can do my vertical axis. And that we can say is, um, this is the total energy in joules. And so now I've included my axis titles and my chart title. I don't really need this legend here. I can simply delete that because there's only one line. 
And one thing you might notice is this now, there's some huge variation here. And that's because if you look right here, Excel didn't start your graph at zero. It made the graph specifically to accentuate the difference. Now this can be a little helpful at first. It can really show us that right here at point D, that's our outlier. And that was, if you were looking for outliers on in your data, that was an outlier. All of the points when compared to point A here, um, or I guess this is actually, A is over here, when compared to point A here, all of the points had about a 1 to 3 percent error, whereas this point had a 13 percent error. So that was clearly your outlier. And that can be shown here. But I'm going to show you how to get rid of that because it can also make you think there's a trend that's not there. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put in the trend line though. I'm going to pick any point and I'm going to do a right click on it. And then I can go to add trend line. And generally, in this class, unless I tell you, we're going to do a linear trend line. If I want to display the equation, I can click on that down here. And then I'm going to close that. So I'm now going to move this equation up here. And as you can see, the slope of the line, 0 0.0052, is quite close to zero, even though this line looks like it has a slope to it. That's, again, because this axis here doesn't start at zero. So I want to show you how to do that. So the way we're going to fix our axis here is we're going to go up to axes and this is still in the layout tab and we want to work with our vertical axis. So all the way down here it says more primary vertical axis options. I'm going to click on that. And this t tells me that the minimum for the axis was auto, meaning Excel decided what it should be. I'm going to fix it and I'm going to fix it at zero. That means that it will start at zero. And so then I'm going to close this. And now you see I've got a trend line that looks much closer to what it says it is. The line hasn't actually changed at all. It's just that I've changed my x axis. Or I'm sorry, my y axis. So that then gives you a graph. Now, one of the things that is important is to kind of have an idea of what your graph should look like. If you get a graph for something like this and it has two different lines on it and you know it should only have one line, that's a big deal. So that's something that you want to kind of keep track of. One of the things I do want to show you is how to add a second line onto the same graph. So let's suppose you had two pegs and they had different masses and so that's going to give you different amounts of total energy. So I'm just going to add in some some numbers for a peg with a different mass. Okay so I've added some data here for C uh, or under column C for a different peg that has less mass because the total energies are all less. So the first thing I might want to do is get my legend back. I don't need a legend if I only have one line, but now that I'm going to have two, I, I want that back. So I go up here, also under layout, to legend, and I'm going to say, um, show legend, right, it doesn't matter where I show the legend. And now you'll notice there's also something new. This line shows that this is linear, meaning that this is a trend line. Um, so to now get both lines included, what I'm going to do is click on my graph. And you'll notice it shows um, what data is being graphed on this graph right now. So in order to add the new data, it's actually quite simple. I can bring my cursor over here and simply pull this box to include the next set of data. And you'll notice that data appears right here. I don't have a trend line yet. I would have to go through and add the trend line if I wanted a second trend line, which seems to make sense if I want the first trend line. Let's get the second one then. And now I can move that equation to where I want it, something like that. Oops. Um, at this point, I can format it in a number of ways. But that's how I would get a second line on my um, graph. Now let's say I go through and I realize that one of my heights was off. Say this wasn't 0.906 but it was 0.916. I don't actually have to start over. I can simply click on this and say 0 
and you'll notice that changed everything a little. It was subtle because it wasn't a big change, um, but it did change where the points were and it changed the slopes of the lines a little. And so if you notice when you're double checking your work that it's slightly different, that's okay. You can go back and change it and it will update it on the graph for you. Then of course you can copy and paste this into Word and you have your graph. Please feel free to include any questions you have on the comment section of YouTube. And good luck making your graphs. There will be another video on how to make a chart on Word as well, if that's something you're struggling with.